The guitar that I'm holding is probably one of the most controversial Gibsons to come out in the last, I don't know, 20 years. So I thank you all for coming to my TED Talk. Because today, we talk about the Gibson Theodore. I've had a bunch of people notice that in the back of some of my videos, I have all three colors of this crazy, crazy guitar. Let's take a look at the Gibson Theodore. And by Gibson Theodore, I mean one Mr. Ted McCarty. Now the first thing I noticed, by the way, on all of my models, they kind of have almost like a cloudy finish. And that's where my hate for this guitar stops because I'm gonna say this right now. I love the Gibson Theodore. I mean, look at the headstock. And they only made 318 of these things. 106, I was doing the math. You guys were wondering why I didn't speak faster. I was doing the math. I'm like, what's 318 divided by three? It's 106 in each color. They have a black, they have a natural, and then they have a cherry. My favorite is the black. So what is this thing? Some of you may never have even seen it because, well, there's only 318 of them. This guitar was doodled on a piece of paper in 1957 by one Mr. Ted McCarty. You know, the guy that uh, was responsible for the Explorer, the Flying V, and maybe the Gibson Modern. If you haven't seen my video on the Modern with my friend Billy Gibbons, Go back and check it out. He didn't actually draw those guitars. He just picked them. But this one, he drew. Check this out. Gibson in their vault or wherever it was, maybe it was under Cesar's desk somewhere, found this sheet of paper from 1957 with this little doodle on it of this strange, yet in my opinion, amazing guitar. The only differences between that version of the guitar and this is that it seems to me in that picture, there's like almost a floating pick guard where this definitely is not floating and it looked like it had a master volume similar to the ES-150, but as we all know, who cares about a master volume? So thank you Gibson for not putting it on there. But there's a few little strange things about this guitar that make it very un-Gibson-like. The first thing being, it's made of alder. Gibson as a company has pretty much ignored alder as a tone would since pretty much day one. I had to use the Googles to figure out like what guitars from Gibson were actually made of alder because I wasn't really aware of any. For your own edification, the Gibson Marauder, which was a, you know, a New Orleans era kind of strange land guitar was made of alder and the early Gibson studios in the 80s and the Studio Custom. I want to say around 82, 83, 84. Those were made of alder. And then, to my knowledge, nothing ever again. Lots and lots of Fender Stratocasters are made of alder because it's a light, beautiful tone wood. A lot of jazz basses are made of alder. And the thing that's great about alder is that it's wicked light, guy. Look at that. This guitar weighs six pounds. Now, for those that don't know, I have degenerative disc disorder. My back hurts. I need to go see a doctor of osteopathy so I can run and walk properly because, you know, my spine, it's fusing together. I see my muscles playing. This 12 pound Les Paul is not how I want to ruin my back. So this guy, that's literally half, this is half the weight of this. I say to Gibson, why didn't you use alder sooner? He specified right on the piece of paper, make it alder. And not only is it alder, but it has a little strip of walnut down the middle, which I think is both classy and cool. Something that again, you don't see on a lot of Gibsons. And of course, as you guys may notice, what's up with this cloudy finish on all three of mine? It's got this cloudy kind of buff finish, except I've actually cleaned the shit out of this guitar. Not sure what's up with that, Gibson. But beyond that, I love this guitar because I love Alder. I love the fact that I can pick up a guitar and I'm just like, oh, huh, ah. But another thing indicative of Alder is it's a very tonal wood. Now it's funny because when I first showed my buddy Corey this guitar, he goes, it looks like something someone drew on a piece of paper. 
You're right, Corey. It is. Because Gibson decided we're going to do something new. And by something new, we're going to do what Van Halen does, what Guns N' Roses does, which is basically take something that's been sitting around for years and years and years and make it like it's new. They wanted to have a 24.75 inch scale. We got it. Said, put Les Paul inlays. I want to see Les Paul inlays. It's just dot inlays, but whatever. Unbound, it's not bound. And it has this wraparound tailpiece and two beautiful P90s. And for those that don't know, I love P90s. It's funny because every guitar that I've ever had with P90s, I end up trading. I'm never gonna let this one go. Some people say it looks like a tulip. It looks kind of funky and strange. I like that because I too am both funky and strange. But the thing about this guitar is when you hold it, when you get it in your hands, it feels awesome. You have the scimitar headstock, which as we all know, is from the Explorer. But it's just like a badass, like, I should be sitting there doing Kiss. Hey guys, come to my rock show. Arr! One of my favorite guitars is this Gibson XPL 400 from the New Orleans era. That's a Les Paul kind of looking thing, or double cut Les Paul with a scimitar headstock. Look at them. They're almost like they should be sisters. So we have two volumes. We have two tones, a wraparound bridge, two P90s, three-way toggle, because I don't need more than three different selections on this. Super, super simple. The big controversy when this guitar came out was it was $4,999.99. That's a lot of money for a really simple guitar. But I'm not gonna argue with Gibson because the thing is, Gibson is a premium guitar company. I'll say the case that this thing came in might be the nicest case I've ever seen from Gibson. It's all pink plush, it's huge, it's like a double neck side, it's amazing. I judge a guitar by how much I pull it off the wall. I have played this guitar non-stop. I find myself at like one o'clock in the morning getting up and just going, this one's the one for me. I don't know why. Maybe it's the scimitar headstock. Maybe it's the P90s. Maybe it's the fact that it looks like a tulip. I don't know. Maybe it's just Ted talking in my ear, saying, bully for you, Theodore Roosevelt. Let's go build that Panama Canal. The neck on it is like this chunky 59, which is the way I believe they describe it, and I feel right at home on it. So without further ado, let's go see what Ted has to say about it. When I got this out of the case, when I sent it across the country to myself, it was perfectly in tune. And when I took it off my wall this morning, it was perfectly in tune. Let's check it out. Sounds pretty freaking good. because a lot of the times when I do these demos, you know, I hear a little bit of my guitar through the speakers over here and then I go back and listen to the demo. I'm like, oh, that sounded great. That doesn't sound great. This guitar sounds so good.
Let's hear how this thing sounds a little bit dirtier now, shall we? <laughs> Someone had told me that this guitar was $5,000 as they handed it to me. I'd probably be the same way. Like, what? That? They only made 106 of these in ebony. 318 total. So it's a very exclusive guitar. And again, on the secondary market, they're already going for $6,500. The simplicity of this guitar truly is its perfection. I love the P90s. I love the P90s in a Gibson. I love the P90s in a Alder Gibson with a little walnut stripe because it sounds positively rad. Every single tone that I heard in this demo is completely usable. So how do I feel about it? You can take this guitar out of my Ted hands. Why don't you smash that subscribe button already? That's it. Do you guys hear that? Not for me. For the dog. Babe, shh. I'm filming. I'm saying hi, and he's excited to see me. Yeah, I'm on camera. Okay, that's nice. Hey, Charlie, come here. Come. Let's make an appearance. 